So, maybe first to Tina and Flora, um, the short uh, uh, difference we had there uh, just before. So, being a fashion designer and not being a fashion designer, um, are you really different? Because when I see your talks, I think actually you are doing what you want. Is it just a label or is it just a box that you put yourself in? Or you can take a microphone, I think. I guess. They both work, right? Yeah, I know they both work, yeah. And there's a third one as well. I guess. Hello? Yes. Let me put it maybe differently. Is the label important? Yes, Flora? Yeah, for me it's an active choice. Mm -hmm. like, um, like, I want to move in the discourse of fashion. Like, to me, that is, it gives me a very concrete starting point. And, um, yeah. So for me it's an active decision. It's also an active decision, like you said, if you want to change something, for example, yeah. in the world of IT, IT mm -hmm. it's important that we, uh, that we educate ourselves and also try to change something in this world. Is, this, is it an active choice mm. as well? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think so. I mean, um, but it's also like, I, I don't know, for me, it's, I think it's, I, I'm just more comfortable. Like, <laughs> Um, limiting myself in that way, like I mean, I could, you know, I, yeah, I, um, I totally understand uh, to let all your talents free and and let simply every idea become something touchable. Um, but yeah, it doesn't, it, it's not my aim or something, yeah. Mm -hmm. Like I feel more like, and also that's the beauty of fashion to me that, uh, you, you know, I, I make dresses but then I present them, I can take pictures, I, I work with musicians for the music on the show, so there I have my musical side, I work on the performance where I, you know, can let a bit of that, so it's like, it's all in the same direction, but I can still live many talents in yes. that way, yeah. Talking about yeah. combining a lot of people together, the idea of collaboration is also very important for you, Bina. It's also a conscious decision not to be a mono but a duo yes. or a multiple. Why? Why? Hmm? Um, I, well, like, why do you breathe? I don't know. Yeah. I cannot do otherwise. Mm -hmm. Like uh, it's the way you cannot describe love. I cannot describe you why I'm working with Viola. I, I'm uh, 34 years old. We worked together since 10 years, and then I of course remember how it feels to create alone. But when we do, when we create together, it's something that I can never do myself alone. We empower each other. We show each other. Uh, a point of view or perspective that the other one never thought about or is lacking. So like I mentioned in my talk, differences are wealth. Mm -hmm. And then like I'm, a, I'm an artist with a certain set of talents, but with an, I'm hoping, an immense capacity to imagine. And then uh, I, def like, I am limited with my own technical knowledge so every time we're talking, we're collaborating with people that are best in their practice, then we are capable of executing dreams that my reach cannot execute. Mm -hmm. It is sometimes considered as something typically feminine to collaborate. I think Indeed. Libby, you also refer to that. That's the, the idea of collaboration, communication, organizing, but also maybe... Sorry, I, I didn't say that was feminine. I said that might be something that women are good at. Uh -huh. And what's the difference? I think feminine is a social construct, it is a style, it is a, an aesthetic, it is mm -hmm. an attitude. Whereas uh, what I was saying is that I think historically women have been good at working in teams and collaborating. But I didn't say that's feminine. Okay, and, and is it perhaps because... Um, is it perhaps because women were in the social positions that they were in the in in history that they had to collaborate and maybe i don't know maybe 
became good at it? I don't know. If, is, is it maybe a, a well, historical that, construct that's, as well? That suggests that it's an inherited, congenital, gendered thing. I think it could be partly that, that perhaps just out of the very nature of having to be the traditional child-rearing, child-caring person of the family, that that ability to understand, accept, compromise, but also find solutions has been handed down. Mm -hmm. um, but um, the nature nurture here. the nature nurture discussion is I think quite quite deep and broad and um, but maybe it's also something quite contemporary to choose to collaborate and also to name all your collaborators to say that you are a team. Um, I recognize this in other fields of art as well. Um, do you agree? Or is it something that is happening around you? Yeah, to me, I don't even think about it. It's so normal. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But for you, also, it was a conscious choice to surround yourself, for example, with people who know, know more about technology. Um, oh, yes. <laughs> yes, yes. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was the only way how I could actually, in any kind of way, get there. Mm -hmm. Like, get in touch with, with uh, technology. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But do you agree that it might be something contemporary? That it's a new evolution to name your collaborators and to show your collabor collaboration proudly? Yeah, yeah. I think uh, with each generation, people are, are uh, like with each, like look, look at your parents uh, or look at your grandparents. There are so many subjects that you would try to talk about and there would be a difference in wavelength you would not be able to communicate. Because always, newer generations always come with a more wider consciousness. Mm -hmm. So being collaborative in opposition to being oppressive dictatorship is of course a more conscious choice. So uh, all these, like, even though it's a buzzword, community, the very, the very word community, mm -hmm. even though it's a buzzword, it has incredible implications in empowering people in uh, uniting them, like rule number one, if you want people to feel segregated and divided, divide and rule. When you're unified that you are strength, you mm -hmm. are strong. So uh, in that sense, uh, of course, like as part of this uh, conscious development, people naming their collaborators, saying that Kazano Kunstwerk, it's all like done together, mm -hmm. instead of me, 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 uh, star, you, like, ideal, idealization of another human, in my opinion, is also uh, diminishing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because in, yeah, like, when you think about it, if you idolize uh, somebody else, facing that, you become a victim. You become a small self. And this whole patriarchy rules around idealization of white man, and the rest of humanity following it. So as a result of people gaining with each generation more consciousness, this idealization is also diminishing. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I, can I just add, I think it is actually a trait of modernism to have the auteur, the single individual, mm -hmm. and perhaps you know, with the rise of more embracive pluralistic ideologies like postmodernism uh, has also come uh, the sort of embracing of collaboration, but also I think maybe it might be specific to design. I don't know, I want to put it out there, you know, people like Jeff Koons don't make their own art. <laughs> but exactly. The, but the manufacturers and collaborators aren't listed in any, you know, international art collection. So maybe it's, maybe it's something specific to the nature of design, you know, be it fashion, furniture, film, set, whatever. Exactly. C can I add an opinion? I think uh, you're very right. I never thought about this before. Uh, I think when humans are used as biological robots, people think that there is no need to mention their name. When Jeff Koons dictates human hands as if they were AI, execute this, then there is no dehumanization of humans is in occurrence, no need to mention. But whenever there is like an idea, uh, a vision, a point of view, a craft that has been executed with self-will, then people find it, 
yeah, worthy of mentioning, but I, I would go into an impossible dehumanizing direction. The last time when such things happened, it was uh, Second World War and its consequences. When we are dehumanizing humans, then the end that it may go, it's really scary. Mm -hmm. But I think it's quite interesting to look at art, for example, as well, and see how it functions and whose name is actually on the work sometimes, although they might, might not have touched it. Um, Flora, you wanted to add something to that? Mm, yeah, and, well, I, I just thought about like uh, social media, you know, where, where actually like it is about like tagging as many people as you <laughs> can because then you have bigger reach. <laughs> so that has also its own dynamics. Mm -hmm. well, talking but about still, I think it's true. Like the, the still, it's own like mostly the, only the pe the cool people are tagged. So that is also like really, uh, yeah, again this kind of survival uh, evolution theory that we always just look for the powerful people that we then, yeah, mm -hmm. put the name out. There. It's very interesting how you bring, um, for example, social media or technology um, in the conversation, because I was wondering, like, in this design fields where there might be, yeah, these new fields of technology, is, are there less male custodians, for example? Is there more freedom in these fields? Um, but you already mentioned it's a very male-dominated nerd field. Well, I actually, I disagree with that point. Yes, mm -hmm. um, in large part, I think about where women are making, you know, leaps and bounds are in the industries where there aren't any male gatekeepers, where they are inventing their own rule books, writing their own rule books, and technology is one of the leading issues of that. And I think if you were to get a list of all the CEOs and COOs of every international tech giant, it, you'd be surprised by how many women are in it. Mm. Um, but they may not be the senior, you know, mm -hmm. I think I was saying earlier today, you know, Sheryl Sandberg is CEO of Facebook, you know, which is right up there with Mark Zuckerberg. You know, and that's an impressive position to have. And I think through Motorola, through Nokia, that's through, CEO through, 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 through Chief it? Operating Officer. Yeah. So he's CEO and she's CEO. Um, but you know, I think all of them, you will definitely find a high level. Um, but whether that's considered in the statistics we've been reading, whether that's considered design, is might throw that and I think technology is considered as a science and technology is not separate to the arts and design mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. ladies I think we can talk about a lot of stuff unfortunately we're going well we're really going over time so I might just look if there is anybody who has a question why did you oh, choose yeah, yeah. silicone to work with well that's a material that uh, huh, well, <laughs> that's um, that came from the time where you saw the big uh, painting, digital painting. Uh, it's actually from the first time I ever went into a sex shop. And I was very much visually attracted to everything. I was like, whoa, the materials here are just super exciting. And I was like, how is all this fabricated? Like, how did they make these neat surfaces and so on? So I was very much interested in the industrial design part of <laughs> all the silicone uh, tools. And so that's how it started, even though I never used it like in a you know kinky way, I just found it an exciting surface that very much like represents the digital aesthetics. And so it's a very difficult material to work with that you have to get to know very well. And now I'm in a state that I could make anything from silicon, like any idea, I'm like, okay, silicon. But it has a downside, it's plastic and not biodegradable, so I am now actually limiting it to projects where I know something has to also stay forever. The good thing is it is um, a material where you have actually no waste while producing with it because you mold it, so where you put it in you will use that shape. Yeah. Thank you. Any other question? Can't really see that well. Change the lights. Change the lights, thank you. Yeah, can we maybe? Yeah, um, can we put the house lights on maybe a little bit more? The Dijkslicht. Yes, thank you. It's a little bit better. Are there any more questions? And otherwise, I will go maybe look at Wiede. Am I too soon? <laughs> okay. 
uh, yeah, I was just doing abstract drawing of uh, the, the ideas. I like like the, 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 the head represents like CEO, so C, uh, COO, and it's interchangeable between men, women, uh, uh, neutral gendered people, like that, bon, whatever. Uh, yeah, I will think about it and I'll uh, try to explain it later. Um, yeah, the, the anonymous people who made the Jeff Koons art, uh, something um, I like that Pina said about uh, dehumanization, something that reminded me of the Holocaust, whatever, it's maybe too dark, okay. Uh, how does a female mind work? Um, I, yeah, it was like uh, the Venus of Hoelefels, uh, I like the, the, the purity of the image, so, oh. and then, yeah, that was the first thing when I didn't know what to draw, so I just drew the microphones. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Vida. So, let me say, this was already uh, AZ night number 10, and many thanks to the three fantastic women that um, were here tonight. Libby Seller, Spina Demirak, and Flora Miranda. <laughs> and of course, Vida, who dared to stand on this stage as the only man. And a big thanks to the Modern Museum Hustle, who was um, a very interesting co-curator of this evening. And um, we also invite you all to visit the two beautiful exhibitions in Hasselt, dedicated to power fe powerful female designers and artists, dissident quilting against at Z33. Um, it runs until the 26th of May, and Wonder Women, Strong Women in Fashion at the Modern Museum in Hasselt. Um, for uh, yeah, so also thank you, of course, for being here tonight. And on behalf of all the AZ Night past partners, Z33, Architectuurwijzer, Mia, a new partner, um, and it's the fashion incubator located here in Hasselt, PXL Med School of Arts, Luca School of Arts, Campus SEMA, and the U Hasselt Faculteit van Architectuur en Kunst, who work together to make these evenings possible, and we get financial support from the Flemish community, very important to mention that. And um, good to know, Aya Noel, a freelance writer and editor from an online fashion platform. Um, let me just check. Um, she will write a text based on her research and all that has been said tonight. Aya Noel, where are you? Maybe, ah, uh, there you are. Hi. So you will, re you will write a text tonight and it will be seen, uh, it will appear on the AZ Nights. Um, sorry? Tonight. Tonight, oh, I'm sorry, it's so hot in here. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so yeah, so you will write it in a few days and it will appear on the website of the AZ Nights and on the Facebook event page. And okay, last but not least, we will hope to see you all again in autumn for another two editions of AZ Nights. So let's go to the bar, we will have a drink, talk to these lovely ladies, and I will see you soon again.